Clanmel Junction Arts Festival. Hi, my name is Eva Mahoney and I'm the writer and performer of The Cute Whore, The Lives and Times of Peg Plunkett. Uh, the Cute Whore, it's a play based on the real woman, Peg Plunkett, who lived in the 18th century. She was a wealthy landowner's daughter, but due to circumstances, she had to go and live with her sister in Tullamore. Uh, from there, she eloped with a man and had his child and was disowned by her family. And from there, she became the mistress to, to a few men. Then she became a courtesan, and then she opened up her own brothel where she became a very famous madam. She was notorious during her time, uh, but became even more notorious after she had given up the life of a courtesan and decided to publish her own memoirs. So my play is set where she is at the end of her life and looks back on her experiences. I was lucky enough to receive the bursary from Tipperary County Council for the Tyrone Guthrie Centre in Anna McCarrick in County Monaghan. It's a beautiful stately home which was, which was uh, left to the state by Tyrone Guthrie he was encouraged by his sister, so himself and Charlie Hall, he uh, put their heads together and came up with the Tyrone Guthrie Centre. Um, Theatre in the time of Covid, I think we as theatre makers are quick and easy to adapt to things. A lot of, a lot of performances have been brought online. There is a, there is a good opportunities here. So. For example, the National Theatre have put plays that they recorded online, plays that I wouldn't have had any, you know, opportunity to see before, whether ticket sales or prices of it. Um, so, and I think if we pull together under strong leadership, and I mean strong leadership, um, as in everybody working together with everybody with their own uh, with ideas, and together we can um, overcome. It will take time and money, so hopefully, like, we'll be able. The government will see it as um, an investment rather than an expenditure, uh, because um, you know we will recover hopefully. And as kind of theatre makers, writers, artists, you know, it's also our job to um, make the most out of this situation. And you can even see it online. People have been kind of writing plays via Zoom and uh, comedy sketches via Zoom. I mean, there are, there are opportunities. So, like you have the junction online. So you have to get a proper job, I think. <laughs> Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. That's how it goes, isn't it? So, should I bathe your feet with my tears and dry them with my hair? Mary Magdalene, she did that for Jesus, didn't she? I saw a painting of it once. She was... She was wearing a green dress with checkered prints as if she was a Scottish lass. And her hair, hair was brown, fell all the way down to her waist. And she, she was kneeling before him, holding his foot in her hand. And Jesus, Jesus was just sat there looking at her, with a smile on his face. I often wondered if the man and woman portraying them were lovers. Or maybe Mary and Jesus were lovers. The artist caught on. Forgive me, Father, I didn't mean to offend. You look like a priest, all right, with your eyes. They judge me. But you, you don't dress like one. Your shoes are far too fine for any good Catholic. When I was a girl, my father, oh, he gave me a pair of shoes. I loved those shoes. 
They are white with a small pearl placed right on top of them. And I, I would dance and dance and them. I would spin in a circle until I would get so dizzy that I would fall amongst the tall grass. Then I would grasp the crown so I didn't fall off the edge of the world. Then one day I lost a pearl from my shoe. Oh, I thought the world would end. <laughs> I scrambled on the ground looking for it. Where's my pearl? Where is it? And after that, couldn't abide to wear the shoes anymore. And that was the end of my little girl dancing. My father, he noticed. Why don't you wear your little shoes anymore, Peg? Oh, father, I lost them. I lost the pearl. I lost it. And now I can't bear to wear them anymore. And now my life is ruined. Ah, Peggy, my father said. Wouldn't it be worse if we lost you? Anyway, if I can't find a little pearl to put in your little shoe, what good of a father am I? Oh, well, he was the best father, father. <laughs> and so he found a little pearl to put into my little shoe. And then, then I began to dance and dance again. I dance now to keep the heat in and the spirits up. It's cold now and damp. Still, especially to be cold, the smell, the smell that comes in from the Liffey. What's the lesser of two evils, Father? To feel the cold in your bones, smell the smell of the Liffey. I'm not a born martyr. Women like myself, we seldom make old bones. Every day I see them out there, they're looking and pointing. They're saying, there she is now. There's the old whore. Oh, look at her. Still, she got what she deserved after naming and shaming all those decent, respectable men. Decent, respectable, my eye. I didn't get what I deserved. A dog, a dog doesn't deserve what I got. So, now you're thinking, how did a young girl whose father put a little pearl into her shoe come to this? Oh, it's a sad tale, father. used to warn young girls. If you're not good, you'll end up like Peg Plunkett, mad, with a face full of sores. Well, that's why you are here, isn't it, Father? To hear my confession before the madness takes me. My father was destroyed when my mother died. Death is the biggest thief, father. You go on about life everlasting, but, but what about the lives it leaves behind? It's a robber. It robs you of the woman that you could have been, the life that you could have led the happiness that you could have had. It stole my mother from my father and my father from us. He may as well have lay down and died with her. And we were left alone with him. He had a cruel nature, my brother, and as he grew, so did his nature. The whole neighborhood knew. They tried to help, but no one could intervene. I was his property, you see. We're always somebody's property. Sometimes when I was lying in bed with a man, he'd see some scars on my back and he'd say, Jesus Christ, Peggy, where did you get those? 
How could I tell him how I got them? Men came to me to forget, to grasp a few hours of pleasure, to escape the sheer mundanity of their lives. How could I tell them that they were given to me by my own brother? I was 16 years old, as pretty as a picture, and as pure as the driven snow. I had stayed the night at a neighbor's house, that is all. I thought, oh well, if I'm home in time, he won't know. But I knew, I just knew on the journey home that he'd be there waiting for me. And sure enough, he was there waiting for me. Where have you been all night? Nowhere. That's a lie. Come on, Peg. Tell the truth and shame the devil. The devil. He was the devil. How long had it taken for a servant to hear my screams? How long had it taken for him to summon up the courage to defy his master and to summon my father? How long had it taken for him to ascend the stairs to my father's room? How much time had it taken for him to tell my father what was happening? How much time had it taken for my father to dress himself? How much time had it taken for him to descend the stairs? To walk to where I was being beaten, to grasp my brother's arm, which was flailing wildly with a whip. And there I was, my dress torn, my back torn. How could I have told him that? That night, my father came into my room. You're going to stay with your sister in Tullamore, Peg. Ah, Tullamore. It was in the town of Tullamore that I took my first steps to being a whore. So, you're still thinking, how did she come to this with all her wealth, all her influence? Oh, it's a sad tale used to warn young girls who ever think of putting a foot wrong. It's filled with death, misery, remorse. <laughs> a memory comes to me far back when we would be gathered around the fire after whispering the rosary. After the prayers would come the stories. And Mary, our fine fat cook, would tell us of the ghosts and ghouls and goblins that surrounded us. There once was a man who followed a beautiful woman into the fairy sport one night. Oh, he was given the best food, the best wine, but in the morning a hundred years had passed and all his friends and all his family had died and he was left with nothing. I was like that man from a hundred years ago. And Dublin was like that beautiful woman. She had beckoned me with her lights and her music and said, come here, it's me bag, come here and we'll have such a good time. But now she had lost her luster. She wasn't as young as she used to be. So 
So I said to myself, Peg, no more. For I had grown tired of being a whore. It was the girl that did it. A long time ago, a girl, beautiful young girl called Sally, she came to me and said, Oh, Mrs. Leeson, I want to be like you with your fine clothes and your fine house and your fine carriage. Come this way, I said. And we lived together for many a year where we were wined and dined until one day she wasn't there anymore. And all came saying that she had ran off with a soldier and I said, fine, may the road rise to meet her and all that. But then years later, I passed an old woman with, with a face full of sores. I gave her some money. Thank you, Mrs. Leeson, she said. Do I know you? I asked her. Oh, you do, she said. And it was her. But she wasn't an old woman, but nor was she the young, beautiful girl. Is it yourself, Sally? It is, she said, with a mouth full of sores. I couldn't look at myself in the mirror after that. And I, I felt so ashamed. I was so tired of it all. I was tired of the pandering, the plumosing, the pimping. Too many young women didn't have their day. Too many young souls were sucked away. They missed me, oh, they did miss me. Come back to us, Peg, they cried. No, for my soul, it must be saved. Will it be, Father? Have I suffered enough? 